NFL recap. You know I do the whip around every Monday. A ton of shocking, pretty much impossible things to believe right now going on in the NFL. I mean, some really weird things and weird things that are good. However, something that is not shocking but is amazing, Bills Chiefs. Bills Chiefs. Typically, predictable is not good unless we're talking predictably awesome. Then we're talking about the Bills and the Chiefs, and nobody is going to complain. Nothing ever lives up to the hype unless Buffalo and Kansas City are playing football. Then almost nothing else matters. Now, it did take a couple of quarters for that game to get going. Then we hit the two-minute drill at the end of the first half, and all hell broke loose. First, you had Buffalo. They had it on their own four. Under a minute and a half to go in the half. And then Josh Allen went Josh Allen and laser showed his way up the field to give Buffalo a 10-7 lead. 96 yards, minute 13 for that drive. And that, of course, left 16 seconds on the clock. It's a lot of time now. And believe me, Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes, as you Bills fans know, has done a lot of damage with less time than that. So after the kickoff a term, Mahomes... Mahomes? And the Chiefs had 12 seconds to work with. Every single member of the Bills Mafia broke into flashbacks and cold sweats and panic attacks. The perfect chance for the Bills to show that that epic disaster that ended last season on that same field would never happen again. Except the exact same thing happened again. Ouch. The thing is, that one probably would have been good from 72. So for Bill's fan, that had to be like the ugliest, most painful wound ever to get ripped wide open again. You know, then with the ensuing full-on hemorrhage. Like I thought they were going to bleed out right then and there. Forget revenge for the 13 seconds last year. The second half of this game became revenge for the first half of the game, right? But in the end, Mafia, in the end, Bills fan, you got yourself a different ending, didn't you? Quonk, quonk. Depressed much? That's true. Normally, you don't see that guy try to force that ball into that situation and that coverage. So, but he did. Massive win for the Mafia. And I've got to shout out. i got to take just one second and shout out my dude, Jordan Poyer. He was not cleared to fly to Kansas City because of a rib injury and a collapsed lung. All right? It was that bad. They would not let him on a plane. I mean, how can you play if you're not even healthy enough to fly? No biggie. So he misses one. Everybody understands this, right? Uh, Wrong. My man hops into a sprinter van. He drives 15 hours, and he plays in the game. Probably listening right now as he's driving 15 hours back home. If you are, my dude, mad, mad, mad respect. In fact, all the respect. That right there is what this team is all about. There is all in, and then there's this Buffalo Bills team on a freaking mission. The vibes are amazing in Buffalo right now. However... As great as those vibes are, nobody is vibing harder or better this morning than the city of Phila freaking Delphia. The city is not just having a moment. Its moment is having a moment. If they keep this up, there is not going to be enough Crisco or diesel batteries or horse pies in all of Pennsylvania to supply this party. Because this right now is about as good a party as there has ever been. Am I right, Philly? Is there anybody in market, on topic, not named JD, and JD you can call, that wants to tell me what it's like right now? The Phillies are in the NLCS. The Eagles are still the only undefeated team in football. And all of this is why Nick Sirianni was storming through the tunnels at the link last night screaming, how about them Eagles? I get it. You can. You should. Rock, paper, scissors. My man, look at this guy. Seriously, how about them Eagles? They made that look easy last night. Well, until they got bored in the middle of the game, but then they made it look easy again when they finished. 
Unfortunately, on the flip side of that, and I've got a lot more thoughts on Philadelphia, man. I love, love, love the Eagles. This is why I've been riding so hard with them on the pod, on the show. I just, I love what they have going on. Unfortunately, on the flip side of that, nobody is feeling the rush any longer. After that game, Dak said that he plans to play against Detroit next Sunday. Something tells me there will not be any debate about that this week. That's something being the ugly gag job that Tom Sawyer put on film last night. You done a nice job. Taking nothing away from it, but you're not going to make an argument that he gives them a better chance. Not after seeing that. Sorry about that, Tom. Cowboys getting back Dak, and they need him back because their head coach is still Big Fat Mike. Ah. As good as the defense is, and by the way, maybe not as good as everybody made them out to be, but as good as that defense is, Big Fat Mike is just still waiting in the wings to jack something up at the worst possible time. You know, like that critical moment of the game last night. Already down 14 nothing. Looks like it's going to be an absolute blowout. Bleeding out on national TV. Rush completes to CD on third down, who clearly reaches it over the line for a first down, but a bad spot sets them up for fourth and inches. So what does Big Fat Mike do? Challenge the play? Nope. Call a quarterback sneak and just have Coop fall forward two inches? Nope. What McChunky did was dial up a hideous, doomed play, play action that never had a chance. A play action rollout that never for a second had a chance. And then we just have McChunky doing McChunky things. So, no, there is no quarterback controversy there. However, there is a head coaching controversy. And there has been from the very second that he and Jarrah had their infamous first sleepover. Moving along, because it is a whip around. There is no quarterback controversy in Dallas. But you know what? There might actually be one in New England. Maybe. Because Bailey Zappi is balling the hell out. And the Pats smacked the seriously hideous-looking Browns yesterday in Cleveland. How about this rookie? This rookie QB. Cleveland? Yes, Cleveland. The rookie QB goes off. For 309 yards and two touchdowns, and most importantly, he didn't run over and try to present the game ball to the hood man like his fellow rook, Brendan Schooler. That, that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen from the hood. You know, if we grade on a scale, if it happens to any other coach, you know, it's somewhat amusing. But to see this kid go over there and try to give the ball to the hood and the hood just shake him off was maybe the hood's funniest moment ever. In case you missed it, dude recovered a muff punt. Then tried to bring the ball to Belichick, and the hood could not have been any less amused. I don't know. I I have a feeling that he was actually saying, son, get the bleep out of here. Get out of my face with that, whoever the hell you are. Son, do you know who the hell I am? Do you know where the hell you work? Do you know what the hell the shield represents? What, what are you doing? Are you going to give me that ball and not give me my Capri Sun and orange slices? Yo, this is not the replacements, dude. This is the NFL. Go sit down and shut your mouth. I mean, yeah, his head and heart. Don't, don't at me. Don't at me. His head and heart were in the right place. He made a play, but come on, man. You saw the reaction from the hood. It's priceless. Like this earnest, clueless Rookie running up on the mumbler like a golden retriever with a tennis ball. Slobbering all over it. And the mumbler wasn't having any of it. I can't read lips. I wasn't there. I don't know what he said. But I bet it sounded something like this. He probably went into his full curmudgeoned mumbler mode. Hey, hey, hey kid. And hey, you want to give me a ball? You want to give me a ball recovered on a muff punt? Huh? Hey, kid, hey, do you know how many balls my teams have reco- recovered over the years? More than the number of zits on your pimple-ridden face, son. My teams have been recovering fumbles since when your mom was changing your diapers. 
By the way, who the hell are you anyway? Back to the practice squad. Clear out your locker. Don't you ever show me up like that on national TV. Uh, the hell you think this is, man? I think Schooler needs to be schooled up on his head coach. You realize this is the same guy who didn't even go to his owner's wedding, which is a storyline for a couple of reasons this weekend. He wouldn't even go to Bob Kraft's wedding. You think that grouch wants anything to do with any kind of kind gesture? A wedding during the NFL season. Man, Bill probably was so insulted by the mere thought of that, of the mere thought of him missing out on a film session on Friday. I bet he didn't even RSVP to the invite. Imagine that, like disrespecting your boss that much. The guy's getting married. Yeah, like he was going to show up for that. When a front office lackey tried to hand Bill an invite, he probably gave that intern the schooler treatment also. Uh. I'm telling you. This guy, I can only imagine what happened when they tried to find Belichick to let him know, hey, hey, coach, you know, big weekend in New England. Bobby Kraft got married Friday night is what I'm getting at. And among others, I'll tell you who did go, not Belichick, but Bacon 45 was there. Bacon 45 was there along with guys like Vince Wilfork, Randy Moss, Ty Law, Richard Seymour, Drew Bledsoe, Elton Bleeping John, Ed Sheeran, Meek Mill. I mean, who wasn't there? The Hood Man. The mumbler blew off his boss's wedding, which is about the most boss move ever. I sure hope he came to the facility and parked in his boss's spot, too, this morning. Apparently, Bacon45, though, he went. He shouldn't have, apparently, because that old man clearly did not get enough rest before yesterday's matchup with the free-falling Steelers, who are no longer free-falling anymore because of, well, Bacon45 and the rest of them. There clearly is no recovery in those recovery jammies that Bake is rocking. Like, Brady was not just mediocre. He was also red-assed as hell. He went viral for berating his offensive line on the bench, which I'm sure they were really happy to get their asses chewed by a dude who skipped the walkthrough on Saturday and flew to Pittsburgh on his own. Because why? Because he wanted to party with Ed Sheeran at Bobby Kraft's wedding. Now, at the same time, I get Bacon 45's point, too. Dude was like, hey, man, I didn't leave or blow up my bleeping family only to lose to Kenny Pickett and Mitch Trubisky. Which is fair because that is a horrible look. Mitch Trubisky. A horrible listen, too, if you listen to big head James Kelly. But then again, you want a bad look. How about Mr. Nothing is more important than football? Once again, putting something else before football. So more on that a little bit later on. But he did skip that. He went in by himself to Pittsburgh. He was not with the team. He was not for that walk or with that walkthrough because he wanted to hang out with Bob Kraft, the former quarterback with the former owner. But the current head coach didn't do it. Oh, and what do you know? The current head coach kicked ass. Wild weekend. Wild, wild weekend. You want wild? You want wild? Both New York football teams are good. And not sort of good, but maybe, well, maybe, maybe sort of good. Explain to me how the Giants are 5-1. and one. I mean, it's a miracle, but they are. They are 5-1. and one. I'm looking at them, how busted up they are, the talent they don't have, and I know who they played, but how the hell are they 5-1? And the Jets are a joke no longer after going into Lambeau and beating the pack down. Hey, Packer fan, I would say now would be a very good time to panic. And also, this weekend, a lot of you are into me and James Kelly. I went 5-2 and two against the spread, feeling pretty good about me. Because we made a point of saying before we picked those games, man, this is a hard, hard weekend. This might be the hardest weekend that we've seen in the last couple of years in the NFL. Hard weekend. I'm feeling pretty damn good about myself to go 5-2 and two against the spread. Until you realize the two games I lost, Green Bay and Tampa Bay. 
Green Bay has jammed the head and eyes so hard three weeks in a row. And a lot of you want to know, hey, yo, hey, yo, you learned your lesson yet. And my response is, hey, yo, yes. Yes, I have. 